When I was five, as I recall, my mother brought home several sticks of oil-based modeling clay. I never stopped after that. I've been sculpting ever since. My first career was at the Science Museum of Minnesota in St. Paul. And prior to being hired as an artist there, I traveled with the paleontology department out on digs and with the anthropology department out on digs. So I really had a early grounding in science and natural history. And I think that's where the nature part of it comes from. I was just looking, I wanted to do, do some work in stone. And I found a block that, um, of Indiana limestone that, that the otter is made from that uh, was of a certain kind of a tall shape. And so when I began to think about what, what would fit into that piece, the, the pose of the otter just really worked with the, with the block of stone. I was a member of the Sculpture Society for a number of years, but I had learned about the Adina Outdoor Public Art uh, opportunity through them, and then I was contacted by the fellow there who said they were very interested in buying it for the place where it currently is now. It was a kind of a wet environment, of sort of a, I don't know, water feature kind of indoor area that considering that this was an otter, that it would be suitable in that, in that kind of an environment. I agreed, I thought it would be great. There's a certain um, quietness to it, a certain almost kind of solid to, to it in that, in that environment. It sits there, I think, with a certain amount of comfort and restfulness. And that's kind of what that environment says to me anyway, with the bubbling water and so forth, moving water. Public art becomes very much a part of our urban experience in the urban landscape. And when it's well sited, well executed, and important, perhaps for reasons of content, then it is something significant, I think, to us as, as people in a community.